All right, so <clears throat> I've had a couple questions off my last video about what to do about a power supply. <clears throat> As you recall, we did a little video here on how to make a little preamp to boost your MP3 player up to a little more reasonable line level so that you can drive straight into your power amp if you have a tube amp like the one that we built. Um, and uh, not have to use a separate preamp. So I just want to give you a little follow-up video here to give you an idea of some ideas of uh, how we can do this on the cheap. <laughs> so if you look here, what we're going to use is two inexpensive Radio Shack you can see it just says Radio Shack. You could pick these up anywhere. You can get them online. Uh, they're just basic 12 volt transformers. Okay, just inexpensive transformers. And we're going to need two of them to do this project. Now, if you look at the schematic that I have here, and you have to forgive me, I got a little bit of a cold here. We had our first snow this morning, and uh, the cold weather is not agreeing with me too good. My sinuses, anyways. But anyhow, so, the reason we use two transformers, uh, there's a couple reasons. First of all, we need to step this power down to 12 volts so that we can have power to drive our filaments. Also, you need to have transformer isolation for safety purposes. Uh, it's never good to just connect your incoming line to a device and make your power supply because then you have what's called a hot chassis and you run the risk of electrical shock and uh, electrical safety uh, concerns. And we don't want that. So by doing this, we actually put um, transformer isolation between your incoming line right here and your outgoing power right here. So really what we're going to do, if you look at my little schematic here, and I just kind of doodled this out, uh, forgive the, the messiness, but you're going to take these two transformers. You're going to come in to the first transformer with your 110. So you'd put your fuse and your power switch and so forth and your plug on this end. Then you're going to come out with your two. Then these are center tap transformers. So from yellow lead to yellow lead is your 12.6 volts. And from either yellow lead to the black lead is 6.3 volts. So again, since these tubes actually uh, have a split, and remember, if you look at the tube here, let's see here. So here's your cathode, and if you remember, on our filament, you had a center tapped filament, pin 4 and pin 5 were your outside filament windings and pin 9 was the center tap. And if you go from here to here, it's a 6 volt, 6.3 volt filament. From here to here is a 6.3 volt filament. From here to here is the two filaments in series, which would be a 12 volt filament. So these are very convenient that you can wire them either for 6 or 12 volts. Now in this case, we're going to do 12 volts. Uh, by doing 12 volts in series, the current is going to be lower than putting them both in parallel by tying 4 and 5 together. So essentially what we're going to do is we're going to come out of our two transformers and we're going to tie these two 12 volt leads together and tie these two 12 volt leads together just like this. Okay, so that's what we have here. All right. And then in between these, we're going to go to pin 4 with one set of wires, pin 5 with the other set of wires. Now, here to here is 12 volts, but after it goes through the second transformer here, it's going to step it back up to your 125 volts again. Now, of course, this is not the most efficient way to do things. You're going through two transformers, and each transformer is going to have a little bit of loss. Okay, we call it transformer losses. 
due to the resistance of the wires, due to the you know to the magnetism uh, of the core and so forth, you're going to have a little bit of loss. Okay, so what comes in this end is going to be a little bit lower when it comes out this end, but that's not a big deal. We don't care. Now, as we come out this end, we're going to go into a full wave bridge rectifier. So you see our four diodes, the two anodes or negative polarity parts of the diodes tie together here and these two the positive ends or the stripes tie together here this becomes your plus this becomes your minus okay your minus is going to go down to ground and then we just have a very simple what's called a pi network all right and the reason it's called a pi network is cuz the symbol pi the greek symbol pi looks kind of like these three components all right. So our pi network consists of a capacitor, a small uh, low value resistor, and another capacitor. Okay. This drop across this resistor is actually going to re it's going to reduce the ripple uh, somewhat more than if you just put one capacitor by itself. An even more efficient way is going to be to use a coil okay a, a, an, an inductive coil a choke coil but those are more expensive and you don't really need that for this again this is going to be very 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 low current so you don't even these capacitors are a little bit higher than they need to be for this particular circuit if you notice anywhere between 47 and, and even 150 ohm resistor it, it will work it'll just it's not going to affect the voltage a whole lot okay so basically there's a math formula that can help us to figure this out a little bit. If we take this voltage from here to here, all right, so let's say we got 125 in here and we have a lot, let's say we lose 10 volts here, so that gives us 115. Basically, VRMS times 1.414 is going to equal, okay, this is just a math formula, is going to equal the DC voltage that you're going to have right here. And this is a rough estimate. It's not always perfectly exactly this amount, but it's going to give you a rough idea of where we're going to be. So if we take 115 volts and we times that by 1.414, it's going to say you're going to have about 162 volts right here. 162. And if you remember over here, this thing will work fine anywhere from 100 to 250 volts or so. It should work. So 162 volts should be pretty good. Okay? So this just gives you a rough idea. So you basically need all our components. I got them out so you could just kind of see what it looks like. To build this thing up, and I'm not going to build one because I don't really need one right now, but if I were going to build this up, you can buy all of these, most of these parts at Radio Shack. The only parts you cannot get are the high voltage capacitors. You'll have to order those from somewhere or steal them out of a radio or something. But use a piece of perforated project board. So basically on one side, it's just a blank board with a bunch of holes drilled in it. And on the other side, it's little copper dots with holes in the middle of them. See that? And in order to, uh, to build this out, you would just take your components, okay, kind of like the schematic is, poke them through the holes in the, you know, however you need. And then on this end, you can see, there's your wire. Bend it over, and then just tack it down with solder. All right. And you can actually use these leads as traces. So you'd bend them with your little uh, needle nose pliers here and just bend them into shape and then tack them down with solder and connect them together just like the schematic. Okay, Mount them all right on there so forth and so on. You know, Do a neat job and before you know it you'll build this up. Again, here's all the parts if you were going to build your own. Four diodes to make up your bridge, or you can get a pre-made uh, 
bridge rectifier, which, let me see if I can show you one. So, these are great big ones. Okay, so here's a bridge rectifier. They make little smaller ones too. But basically all it is is four diodes in a square package with terminals. It's the same thing. Um, you can purchase these diodes very inexpensively at Radio Shack, once again. Uh, this resistor, and you want this to be maybe a, you know, a couple watts, two watt resistor, something like that. 150 ohm, 100 ohm, something like that to go here. All right, and then your two capacitors, and these are just ones I had on hand. Um, you know, these are 450 volt caps. You don't really need a 250 volt cap will work just fine for this, and they're a lot, they're less expensive. But basically, these few components right here: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten components, and uh, there's your power supply. And again, these can be purchased relatively inexpensively. With the exception of these three things, you can per pretty much purchase everything else at Radio Shack or any basic electronics parts house and uh, make this up. These actually work pretty good, and there's nothing new under the sun. The, pe people have been doing this for a long time with the two transformers back to back. Uh, so, and, and anytime you need electrical isolation, just remember you can do this now these you know these are three amp transformers so they're not real high power so you can't put any big load on it but you know to drive one little uh, vacuum tube like this it'll work just fine you can even get ones that are a little bit smaller than this if you wanted to you know like a one amp or amp and a half um, these filaments only draw you know maybe a hundred two hundred milliamps or something they're low low current and your plate you know, the, the plate circuit on here draws really low current. So you don't need great big huge transformers to do this. But uh, for those of you who are asking, I know I had a couple questions about what to do if, if you didn't want to fit this into an existing amp that already had a power supply in it. How would you build one? Um, or would it be real expensive? No. Um, again, 12 volts transformers are very very common they're used for many different things so even places that only sell one or two types of transformers will usually have a 12 volt and <laughs> even if you know these are actually 12.6 if you notice uh, 6.3 6.3 so it'll be 12.6 which is perfect for a uh, filament but even if it's only 12.0 the filaments will still work just fine uh, they may take a little bit extra time to heat up, not much, but won't hurt anything. Okay, again, tubes are very forgiving, and uh, so you don't don't get too worried about exacting anything. Okay, um, but this is just an inexpensive way I thought I'd share with you, and it's like a, just a quick video to give you an idea of uh, if you wanted to to build an external project, you know, and then you could just use like a little piece of aluminum sheeting or something you pick up at the hardware store and a little wooden base to put it on top of and punch out your holes for your tube socket and mount your transformers and your board and there you go you have a, a simple little preamp for your mp3 player so I hope this helps out a little bit next video we're gonna do uh, boy I have quite a few <laughs> on the table here to do um, we're gonna have the amp back up on the bench here um, I do have this circuit, or a version of this circuit, already built into that amplifier. I've added an extra tube, and as far as this part of it works, it is absolutely perfect. It works really, really well. Uh, where I'm running into problems is the output section of that amp is being really challenging uh, when it comes to the negative feedback circuit, the global negative feedback. So my next video is going to focus on that a little bit. Some of the challenges I'm facing and uh, how I'm going about dealing with it. And uh, again, it's a learning process for me. Uh, the transformers that I ordered and I put in there are great transformers, but they definitely, uh, you know, anytime you change feedback taps and stuff, it affects the overall impedance of that circuit. So 
<laughs> it's a moving target. Anytime you change one thing, it changes everything else. So you get oscillation in your amp and you get all kinds of crazy things and that's what I'm running into. And uh, so we'll do we'll do some video on that next. Then once I get that finished up, we'll get back to our guitar amp project and our proper transformer for that. And we'll get that finished up. And then after that, we got a couple other little things we're going to look at. And then we even have some receivers that need restored. So uh, lots and lots of things coming up and just not much time. Uh, I don't know how many videos I'm going to be putting out in the, over the holidays. I would like to do a couple. I'm taking a couple days off work. But I am leaving town right after Thanksgiving to do a, uh, you know, to a seminar for a day and back. And that, that'll be a real busy trip. And uh, lots of jobs to do. So I'll be kind of tied up here with work uh, for a week or two, but I'll try to slip in a few more videos. But anyhow, um, if I don't uh, do another video between now and then, I hope you all have a very blessed and happy Thanksgiving, and uh, don't eat too much. Uh, I probably will, but <laughs> isn't that what it's for? Anyways, you guys have a great day, and hope this helped you out, and we'll see you next time.